Thank you. Joining us now with a reaction is House Minority Whip Steve Scalise of Louisiana, American Conservative Union Chairman Matt Schlapp, one of our favorites, New York Congressman Lee Zeldin, and Fox News contributor Charlie Hurt. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining you, uh, all of us uh, with us tonight. Uh, I want to start with you, Whip Scalise. Um, I got to tell you, this does give Nancy Pelosi more power when she tells members of Congress, you don't even need to show up anymore. You now have proxy voting and we can just do this without you, right? Yeah, Jason, you know, the thing is it gives Nancy Pelosi power. But imagine being a Democrat who goes back home in a swing district. You just voted to give your voting card in Congress to Nancy Pelosi. And she doesn't represent the values of a lot of those districts. You know, you, you now signed on for San Francisco values. And, and by the way, what are you doing now? Why are you collecting a paycheck? If you want Nancy Pelosi to be the one to vote for you and represent your district and you're representing a swing state somewhere else. And so this is going to be a tough vote for those people to explain. It's unconstitutional, first of all, because a quorum under this just this resolution, they just passed 20 people on the floor. 20 Democrats can constitute a quorum of the House of Representatives, 435 people. That goes against uh, Article One of the Constitution. They don't seem to care about any of that. They just want to consolidate power and spend money. I mean, a drunken sailor would be offended to be compared to them and what they did with this bill. Money to illegals, but, taxpayer funding of abortion. This is crazy. But I got to ask you, Congressman, are, are, does that mean that you're going to challenge this in court? Are you going to go to court and say, hey, and challenge the constitutionality of this? Well, if they pass any bill using these new rules, they haven't done it yet. But they are now creating this opportunity to have 20 people on the floor to constitute a quorum and Nancy Pelosi literally be able to help hold the voting cards of so many of these people. If they pass, I just think it's going to be an interesting question. This, it will be challenged. It'll be challenged. Well, I, I, that's that, that'll be interesting because I believe that you would certainly have standing. Now, Congressman Zeldin, this bill that is being voted on right now is just on the verge of passing $3 trillion. This thing is larded up with all kinds of pork and other things. How do you see this bill? Over 1,800 pages, $3 trillion. This isn't a bill that was drafted through bipartisanship, vetting, debate, compromise, none of that. It gives uh, stimulus checks to people who are legally in our country, massive prison release, uh, legalizes throughout America ballot harvesting, it, it outlaws voter ID, it extends unemployment in a way that's going to keep people out of work for almost another year. I'll add another one to that. It provides provides more money to state and local governments in the hundreds of billions beyond what our local governments are even asking for. So Speaker Pelosi chose this hyperpartisan path to nowhere rather than pursuing the alternative, which was working with President Trump, working with congressional Republicans, and trying to negotiate a compromise. This is something to appease her left flank. Now, this is one, though, that turns off most of America, and she's going to uh, end up with a bill that's dead on arrival in the Senate and not going anywhere. It was a strategic failure on her part on multiple levels, on the process and the substance. Uh, this is a waste of everyone's time, and it's certainly a waste of a whole lot of tax dollars, especially with all those liberal fantasy items, totally unrelated to coronavirus response. I mean, Matt, if you spend a million dollars a day every day, it would take you almost 3,000 years to get to one trillion. And this bill is three trillion dollars. That's ten thousand dollars per person in the United States of America. Why not just give them ten thousand dollars each? Thanks yeah, for doing the math. Thanks for doing the math for me. Uh, uh, Jason, because uh, it's staggering, and we already did $3 trillion. So what I think Republicans are saying, which is rational, is let's let all of the money we've already spent like drunken sailors because the government shut down American businesses, let's let that capitalize in the system. And, Jason, this is the critical point, which is more bridges and more stimulus is not what the American economy nor its people need. They need to be legally allowed to go back to work. They need to be able to open up their shops. If you're a mom and pop, you should be able to be open just like the big box retailers are able to be open. We have this indiscriminate, silly rules out there by mostly blue state governors, and it needs to end. No business can survive if it can't make a product nor transact with customers. It's simply that clear. Now, Charlie, the Democrats have been trying to say, oh, we just need to work together. We got to find something that's bipartisan. 
But Nancy Pelosi didn't do any of that. I mean, they say one thing, do something that's totally opposite. How in the world do they go back to the American people and say, hey, we're the adults in the room. We're the ones that'll work together and get things done. When they put this monstrosity in front of the Congress and then vote to say, hey, we don't even need to come back into session. It's incredible. Uh, this should be a real wake up call, because if anybody doubts what is at stake in this election coming up, this is what's at stake. This is what these people will do. If they get control of the of, of uh, if they hold control of the House, they get control of the Senate uh, and Lord forbid they get control of the White House. This is the kind of insanity that that you're going to be looking at. And, and of course, obviously, the particulars are just astonishing. The sops to illegal aliens, all of that stuff is absolutely uh, just absolutely uh, reprehensible. But but let's step back for a minute. Let's uh, how in the world does piling three trillion dollars in additional debt on hardworking Americans, how does that help them uh, recover from this from this pandemic and recover from shutting down the economy? And, and, and we should look back. You know, imagine where we would be right now, Jason, if we hadn't already piled up 20 trillion dollars of debt on hardworking American taxpayers. But th that's all yeah. these people know so, how to do. They want to pile more and more on there. And, and with it comes just a mountains of regulations that throttle American ingenuity and industry so, and, and, and work that, that d destroys Americans. Now, uh, Congressman Scalise, uh, you're in leadership there. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and what she's done is signaled also in the bill that the House of Representatives may not come back into session until July 21st. I mean, why do members of Congress even get paid if they don't have to go to work? Postal workers go to work. Truckers are going to go to work. Healthcare workers are going to work. But Nancy Pelosi is saying no need to show up anymore. Yeah, can you imagine that even the United States Senate is at going to work and it, we, there is no reason. We were here today voting. Uh, you know, there were about 24 members who couldn't make it in out of 435. And so to suggest that it's complicated to get here is just fallacy. Uh, so why she did this, it's about a power grab. It surely has nothing to do with health and safety because, as you mentioned, you know, we've got our frontline workers back at home in our hospitals or grocery stores. Uh, now in Louisiana today, we just started opening up so you can go into a restaurant today at 25 percent capacity. We could finally go back into places of worship. And yet she's going to say that she doesn't want Congress to be meeting in Washington, debating bills. She just would rather just take your proxy vote and hold on to it so that she can vote for you. I'll tell you this. And of course, Jason, you, you would have never done this either. Nancy Pelosi is not going to get my vote. She surely would not have gotten yours. But for any of those folks that voted for this bill today, how did they go back home and explain today they voted to allow Nancy Pelosi to vote for them so that they don't have to go to work anymore? Well, then why don't they just resign their seat and send somebody up here who wants to come and fight for restoring the Congressman American dream Zeldin. up here in Washington? Thank you so much. Congressman Zeldwin, last word. We've got 15 seconds. If there's a member of House leadership viewing the House of Representatives as non-essential, that House leadership member should step aside. If there's any member of the House who views themselves as non-essential, they should step aside. We should be here. We shouldn't be AWOL. We shouldn't be going home right now. There's important work to do for the American people, for our economy, for businesses, for the workers. And now everyone's leaving. And as you pointed out, it might be for a long time until we come back. Unbelievable. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, uh, for joining us tonight. We really do appreciate it.